Okay, this one was on my to-do list for a very long period of time. Today, I'll show you the most radioactive Geiger counter the world has ever seen. Let's take a closer look at the DP63A. The DP63A is a high-range Geiger counter designed to detect contamination after a nuclear attack or an accident. There are two measuring ranges, 1.5 Röntgen per hour and 50 Röntgen per hour. The 1.5 Röntgen per hour range uses the upper scale, while the 50 Röntgen per hour range uses the bottom scale. In order to take a measurement, we must hold the 1.5 Röntgen per hour or 50 Röntgen per hour button that is located on the right side. Holding both buttons at the same time will result in a circuit test. This unit is equipped with two Geiger Miller tubes. One is for the lower range and the other is for the higher. The DP63A also has a beta window which allows for measuring beta plus gamma or gamma only. Since the DP63A is a high range Geiger counter, I don't think it is very practical, unless you're planning on going inside Chernobyl's Reactor 4. These units were produced by the Soviet Union during the Cold War from the 1958 until the 1970s. What makes these Geiger counters really interesting is the fact that the models produced before 1966 used the radium paint on the scale. This was done in order to make the scale glow in the dark environment. However, it also resulted in the meter itself being extremely radioactive. Today, the scale doesn't glow at all, even when light up using a black light. It seems that there are two versions of the radioactive DP63A. The early models had a little bit more radium paint on them, making them hotter. A few years after the production has started, the amount of radium paint was reduced in order to make the DP63As safer, but they were still stupidly radioactive. These two versions can be easily told apart. The hotter units have a year of production written on the front panel, while the less radioactive ones have only the serial number. Units produced after 1966 used the luminescent paint, but it wasn't radioactive like on the early models. Unfortunately, units without radium scale look almost identical to the units with less radium paint. This makes finding a DP63A with radium scale much more challenging. My first shot at getting a DP63A with a radium scale was unfortunately unsuccessful. Luckily, I managed to return it and started looking for another unit but with radium scale. After some time, I found an auction with DP63A from 1965. I reached out to the seller and asked him if the unit was factory sealed. Unfortunately, the unit was opened in the past by someone else. However, I still decided to pull the trigger on it after I got a really good deal on it. When the package arrived, I immediately knew I had a unit with a radium scale, since my Geiger counter was screaming when it was anywhere near the box. The first thing after opening the box was removing a radium scale from the unit, for safety reasons. If you would like to see the process of removing radium scale from the DP63A, I recommend you watch the part 1 of this video. Although I removed all the radioactive sources, the unit was still very radioactive. That is because radium-226 decays into radium-222, which is a gas, meaning the inside of the unit was heavily contaminated with it. I used the water sprayer to wash out as much contamination as I possibly could. Unfortunately, radium decay products tend to stick to different surfaces, which meant that even after a lot of decontaminating, the unit was still radioactive, but luckily, nowhere near the levels when I first opened it. Inside of the unit, under the two Geiger Miller tubes, there is a B8 strontium-90 source. You may ask, why is there a check source right under the Geiger Miller tubes? Well, this is a great example of Soviet engineering. If you're going to look at the front side of the unit, you can see that the two scales have zeros in slightly different positions. In order to raise the needle to the zero position on the 1.5 Röntgen scale, a strontium-90 source was used. When measured with Terra P Geiger counter, the strontium-90 check source gave a reading of around 1 mSv per hour. Now, let's talk about the other check source this unit has to offer, the DP63A's legendary radium scale. On the first glance, it doesn't look like radium paint, since it has a white, slightly cream color, but when measured with a Geiger counter, it makes it scream. 
The layer of radium paint is very thick, making the scale insanely radioactive. When measured with my therapy, the reading seemed to be around 3.5 millisieverts per hour. Gamma only was 420 microsieverts per hour. Just for fun, I also measured the scale with my Ludlum Model 3 Geiger counter with an Alpha Beta Gamma SBT11A tube. Even though I was on a times 100 scale, Ludlum maxed out instantly at over 500,000 CPM. In order to store the radium scale safely, I put it inside of a plastic bag, which I then put into another plastic bag, which I then put into a glass jar, which I finally put into a lead container. The reason why I used a glass jar is to prevent radon from leaking out. As a result, I managed to reduce gamma radiation from 420 microsievert to only around 8. I've also used the rule of inverse square law and placed the lead pig with radium scale as far away as possible. At the distance of 1 meter, the dose dropped to normal background radiation when measured with my erased gamma spectrometer. Overall, the only reason why I would recommend this Geiger counter to anyone is for its two very strong check sources. This being said, I highly discourage anyone from opening this unit and removing the radium scale, since it is extremely dangerous. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Have I also mentioned that I started my own website? You can find a link to it down in the description. And remember, stay active.